Radio. Let's uh, let's do this thing. G'day, Stu from UAV Futures here. Welcome back to the FPV Mix, where it's a bit of a live stream, talking all things FPV, having some fun, going through some websites, answering your questions. And today it is Simulator Sunday, so I've got a kind of a new little sim I'm excited to show you guys. And also uh, we're going to be playing some other sims on there, just having some fun. But first things first, let's go through this mic check, mic check. One, two, one, two. Can you guys hear me? What's going on? Because we always have trouble starting off these streams i swear i don't know what it is with this software but when i click go it's like oh an error occurred would you like to stream now sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't work sometimes it's i'm not even getting little pop-ups that this is actually going so we're going to answer some questions in here let me know ben is saying sounds great roscoe sticks is saying loud and clear i'm just uh moving some of these cords so i can tuck my chair in right here and uh we should be ready to rock and roll off to the races bob's your uncle radio we have Vern is saying all good, so thank you very much. And let's answer the question, what happened yesterday? So yes, we did have a live stream planned yesterday because it's meant to be every Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. But uh, sometimes toddlers don't like to go along with you, I guess, what you have planned for work. And the night before that, I was up from probably like 2 to 7. So uh, then when 7 o'clock came around, I just passed out. And by the time I actually woke up... Uh, I wanted to get up for the live stream. It was like 11.30, so I woke up very, very late, and the live stream was totally done. So there we go. That's why there was no live stream yesterday, but I'd love to know, uh, what are you guys doing anyway? If you've got some questions, throw them down below. Remember to tag me with at UAV Futures as well. Uh, oh, we've got Dodgy in the stream, so how you going, Dodgy? It's good to see you in here, brother. And uh, yeah, let's answer some questions, have some fun, do some sims, all that sort of stuff. Any give We're also going to be running a giveaway uh, in this live stream. There is the description up above. Uh, you can go check that out because that has the full details on how to enter, what to do. And currently, our prize pool hasn't been claimed yet. We have um, a Tyro 89, a Tarsier 4K... Cinecan, some props, a sim key, and some ESCs. I think we're up to three ESCs in there as well today. Radio. So we've got Gunner. He's watching from work. Dodgy's giving me some uh, a bit of a smile. And UAV uh, Crazy Russian Pilot wants to know, is the Novice 3 any good? Now, I can't I know the Novice 1 and the Novice 2. But let's kick it off for the first real question of the day and find out what the Novice 3 is all about. We've got Charlie chilling out behind me. I think he's chilling out behind me. Let me check. Check that. Yeah, he's having a bit of a snooze on his bed and uh, ready to rock and roll. He's really loving these streams, actually, just chilling inside, getting some little treats. So the Novice 3. And this sim I wanted to show you guys today, too. It was, I'm really excited, but at the moment, I can't find a way to make it work with anything but an Xbox controller because it's like an early, early alpha development kit as well, so I'm not too sure. All right, Novice 3. Novice 3. This is what I'm looking at. Boys and girls, if I jump over, have a look at the uh, sim key. So here's the novice two, um, and then novice. Oh, here we go, novice three. So is it just the novice two, but it comes with a uh, different radio? Come on, show us some pictures here of this drone. So that looks this almost identical to the novice two. If if there we go here. Oh, I don't know if it does have ESCs on the top or any uh, a little led so maybe it is a little bit different um i don't know what's it come with it looks like albert kim might have reviewed it i'd go best starter kit that's what he might be saying it's flight controller it's probably an f4 uh so look i would say it's okay i always felt like with these novice kits the actual drone was the best part of it so here you can see it looks like it might be coming with some 800 d's and an i that's in a rebranded iRange X radio by the looks of things. But uh, those two will be significantly better than what you start with on the other cheap kits. So I'm not sure, depending on what radio and goggles you get. I never like the radio and goggles in the cheaper kits, but uh, for 224 bucks, it looks like you've got everything ready to rock and roll off to the races. So uh, I actually haven't tried that one, but I didn't mind the drones of the Novice 1 or the Novice 2. All right. Um, we've got Younger Buckets is uh, saying he's posted some chat, some pictures in Discord in general chat. You can go check that out as well. The descript, the link is in the description for jumping over if you want to check it out on Discord. It is one of the best places you can go to meet all things, to talk and meet other pilots and do all things FPV. Alrighty, let's answer someone. Um, Lucas, Cas Lucas, Cas I'm sorry, I can't pronounce that. Celesti. 
hopefully I'm saying that correctly. Also, I ordered the Ishin trash can yesterday, and it's going to be here around the 11th. I am so excited. So, uh, yeah, I can't wait for you to get out, get ripping. I really like the little trash can until I flew mine into a fence, and it pretty well... Uh, a wooden wooden barrier anyway, and it kind of exploded. Uh, and Michael Vinyak Viz, is uh, saying, is Ben good safe? Uh, well, I guess you are ordering from an international company that's based in China, and you kind of always, I would say this regardless of where you're going to be buying from, make sure you pay with PayPal. If you pay with PayPal, you're usually protected, and you can just file like a PayPal charge if you don't get what you ask for or any of that sort of stuff. In my experience, I've had really good experiences with Bang and so have a lot of my friends if there's ever a problem there just does like a little uh, submit ticket sort of thing and a lot of people have got their money back if they haven't got it they usually send out spares some people have said they haven't had good experiences but if you're in the states as well you've got amazing options in terms of like race day quads get fpv um what else is there? There's Pyro Drone, the Rotor Right. There's like so many places in the States if you want to buy that uh, you can just go shopping on there, maybe even on Amazon. But I would say generally for the most part, I really don't have too much of an issue with bangers. Um, sometimes they're, they're uh, what would you say, their quality control on their Eshin products can be a bit hit or miss. That's where they're so cheap. But if you're getting something that's a bit more brand name, like they do sell things like Omway Sky Zones, and that you just got to think of them like a big, cheap Chinese eBay. That's how I tend to think about them anyway. All right. Uh, Russ is saying, but I don't have an Uncle Bob. Yeah, well, you don't know about that guy yet, Russ. He's uh, going to be tuning in soon. Uh, great weather for isolation in Melbourne. That's from Graham. Because if you look outside, it is absolutely freezing. It is wet. It is uh, kind of like that grey, overcast, depressing day. So I want to get out for a walk at some time. Take the dog out. Take the uh, kid for a walk around the block. But yeah, at the moment, it's not looking. It's not looking too good. But let me know what you guys are doing too. What's the weather like where you are? Are you getting out for any flying? And also, I want to know what simulator you're using. Okay, Younger Buckets is saying jump a T16 links, the T16S. Uh, they are in Discord general chat. So let's have a look at he. He's very excited for us to check out this jumper T16. Yeah, that's just um, a, li a little email here. This is what we read out the other day. So if you're looking at this here. Where this is just a little email that explains some of this stuff. We read this stuff out in the other stream the other day there. Uh, but anyway, that should be exciting once that finally turns up. Let's move on and have a look at my mug right here. Uh, not sure is saying smash that like button. So actually, that's something I haven't even done. So thank you for reminding. I'm going to like my own video here. And we've already got one downvote. So there we go. <laughs> Let's see how, how many can we get in this stream. Um, and Crazy Russian Pilot wants to know, at UAV Futures, would you recommend the HSKJR Joker? Well, I don't even know what that is. So we're going to Google that. And Nico uh, is saying, I love your vids and the stream and giving me a little love heart as well there. So thank you very much uh, there, Nico. This actually kind of looks like a pretty cool frame, but I worry this looks a little bit, this one looks like a little bit clony for me, actually. So I, it's getting some negative points on that regard. It looks like, let me know what you guys think as well. If we go to screen cap. Actually, uh, I don't know how much that looks like an, I would say an impulse, uh, what is it, the Apex? Is it like the Apex? Because it looks like it has a different mounting plate on the bottom. I don't know what this clear plastic part is on the top. Let's have a bit of a different look. So I have no idea what the point of that is. Um, actually, it doesn't look too bad. As long as it's not a direct ripoff. See, that looks awfully like an... Uh, an apex so that part i'm not really a big fan of so i don't know i'd have to let's have a look at the apex let's see what we can get here and see if we can get one. Oh, yeah no this looks way too similar for me oh is that okay that's on bangers i'm not don't like that one that's super annoying see that I've, that's why i've never reviewed some of those frames that are that are a direct ripoff from some other ones. Let's have here, what do we got? That's the frame kit from Phaser FPV. Come on, there's got to be, let's just go straight to their website, shall we? And have a look here, the Apex frame. And do they have an undershot? That's where I really, that's what I really want to look at. So it's, they're not really helping me 
here. This is like the best we've got to try and have a look at that profile. And how similar does it look? Here. One, two, three, four standoffs on each side. And yeah, this is the man. This is uh why is this so hard to find a picture of what a frame looks like? Come on, companies, what do you know? I'm about to buy this. Can't you just show me what the actual quad looks like from the top? Anyway, uh, have a look around. If it looks too similar to this one, which I feel like it might, even though you can see, I wish I could show you with my hand, uh, the way this mounts that bottom plate is a little bit different than some of them, I think, this one, but the uh, actual shape looks very, very similar. So I would be a little bit hesitant to say, yeah, go and buy that one. Anyway, let's jump back, answer some more questions. We've got uh, people are saying the DRL sim, that's what they want to be using. It's nice and sunny in Northern California. So, uh, well, I am kind of a little bit jealous because, yeah, it's absolutely freezing here. Not that it snows here, it just gets really cold and really wet, but there is snow on the mountains, which are a couple of hours away. All right. And Carlos D is saying, woo, another stream. By the way, I posted another video with no music for you. So thank you very much, Carlos, because guess what, guys? In the last stream, we showed a video of someone doing some absolutely incredible flying. And I was like, nah, this is so good. We're going to leave this music on. It was an awesome video. About 20 minutes after I finished the stream, I got an email from YouTube saying, hey, there's copyrighted music here. Blah, 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 blah. So from now on, we are not going to play. It, like There wasn't an actual copyright strike. It was like a copyright just letting me know I played some copyrighted music. You don't have to worry at the moment. We won't take any further action. But uh, some revenue from that stream will be going to them, all that sort of stuff. But it was still like within, I don't want to risk getting any more copyright strikes or copyright warnings. So, um, yeah, that was it. And I was kind of joking about it, thinking, oh, it won't be that bad. How much can 10 seconds of music be? Well, it turns out it was enough. And now uh, that's uh, why we're going to watch all future videos of me just making the drone noises. So, anyway, uh, the sun's just set where some people are. Nightbot is posting a few things in there if you want to head into like Patreon. There's also the Discord and the giveaway form that should be coming up as well. Uh, we've got Nick in here, Dodgers in here, Ravens uh, in here as well. So it seems like we've got a fair few of the crew in here. People saying smash that like button again. And Joseph S is saying at UAV Futures for a standalone flight controller, at what point does price kind of meet performance and quality of FCs and 4M1s also? What's the Excuse me, it's too much soda water. What's the advantage of an F7 over an F4? So we're going to have a look at this one. Mum. Look, it's already the first one that comes up. Oh, this is the mini. But we'll have a, we'll have a look what we can find. So let's say something like this is going to be great for you, my friend. This is where I feel like where price meets performance. And if I go to screen cap... We have uh, the Mumba Stack. This is just an F4. I think F4s are totally adequate for everybody's everyday parts kind of flying. Maybe some people using some, I guess, uh, processor intensive uh, applications on their drones and running sonar and running some mapping and might want an F7. But I feel like if you are just flying around doing racing or freestyle, an F4 is totally fine. Don't feel like you need to upgrade to an F3 or whatsoever, uh, an F7 in the slightest, I should say. And I feel like this is a pretty good example of where uh, when you want to get price meets performance. Look at this here. We also get a 40 amp ESC and a flight controller for 50 bucks. So you're going to be getting both of those. And in terms of four in one ESCs versus normal ESCs, ESCs like this, uh, we used to get them back in the day, the single ESCs that that reflective bag doesn't really help very much with all the lighting in here but those reflective bags <laughs> those that have one esc in them we used to use them because i think that when an esc caught on fire well you've only got to replace that one nowadays i would say it is um you probably the chances of actually melting or burning your escs has dropped by a factor of 10 like it is very very rare to burn out an esc nowadays foreign ones make it so easy just to solder up they keep your build clean they keep the weight down they're just uh Generally, I think a good option in the, especially in this twenty by this thirty by thirty form. If you go a thirty a twenty by twenty, the smaller ones or the sixteen by sixteen, okay, then you're putting more heat into a smaller place. This I feel like the surface area is fine for this four and one. And crazy Russian pilot wants to know: Is the CC three D still any good? I'm pretty sure that's just a troll question because that was one of the first ESCs, uh, the first flight controllers we ever used. All right, and Hill Scraper FPV is saying the Mamba is good all around and 
Uh, people are not sure I was talking about the HGOs. And David Shaw is saying, look at Mr. Steele's freestyle videos. They are crazy. Absolutely. He is a fantastic pilot flying around doing some really, really cool stuff. So I've got to say, uh, Mr. Steele uh, does make some stuff. Well, what I wanted to do today is I've got my Xbox controller here because, unfortunately, we I want to hook it up to my TBS Tango 2, and I know I always talk about this, so this radio, I thought, well, why don't I just grab this? Rather than have to go to a website all the time, we can actually talk about this radio. But uh, I want to play this really cool sim that I don't think is available to the public yet, but unfortunately, it makes me use my Xbox controller, which is stupid. I don't know why they're, why they're doing that. I really, One of the first things, if I was making a sim, I would work on please let me use uh, use an actual radio, unless I'm just not setting it up correctly. And Bradley Lotz is saying, I just got my Nazgul 5 delivered, looking forward to ripping it when it stops raining in Washington State, and he uses liftoff. So for anybody who doesn't know, the Nazgul 5 is absolutely, let me just go to here, one of the best quads you can buy, especially for the money, and have a shop around, because I do feel like, depending on where you get it from, it has been fluctuating in price because it's been very very popular but sometimes you can find a big sale on it and get it for like as little as like 150 dollars or somewhere around that radio uh at uav futures in one of steel's recent videos he spoke with an australian accent yeah i did see that i thought i thought he did a really good job actually much better than i could do uh trying to do an american accent anyway um can i use a kiss 24 amp esc with t motor f7 board i would say yes uh, I don't know too much about uh, about KISS stuff, though. I've flown it in the past, but I probably haven't touched it in about a year. So I, I really can't tell you too much about it. I don't know if you can get some of the special KISS telemetry uh, that goes um, to your F7 board or if it's running beta flight. I'm not sure the interactions between those two firmwares. Um, does the Heine Talk 2 enable you to use D16 and not just D8? So I want to just make sure I'm getting this. So many Tiny Hawks. I want to make sure that I'm getting the correct one here for you. And uh, yes, I'm pretty sure this one here, this one with the changeable canopy. So not the Tiny Hawk S, not the Tiny Hawk Freestyle. This one here uh, from FPV Fast. Uh, is this, this is an Australian shop. I've never never seen this place before. But yeah, I do believe this can go D16. It probably even says it somewhere here if we scroll down. Mm, increase power. Here we go, specs. All in one. Oh, here. I am almost certain that I have bound mine to my uh, other radios using D16, but this one says compatible with D8. So uh, there, there we go. I, I want to say yes, it does. I don't know why, and, but this is on the specs here saying uh, it's made for D8. So I'm sorry with that one. I can't help you too much just there. Uh, let me know. <laughs> well, I guess I'll do some testing. If you email me, I will try and find, uh, hopefully I've still got one of these around somewhere. I'll try and bind one up in D16. I'm pretty sure you could bind at D16. You had to go in though and type. I almost, I'm almost certain I have an email somewhere in my email inbox, how to bind this to D16, showing people how to do that going into the CLI. Can you hook up the X9 Tyrannus with a simulator? So that one's from Musa. Yes, absolutely. That's what it's all about. You want to get a sim where you can connect your radio that you're going to be using out in the field and fly around. It's no good trying to practice flying around with one of these sort of, uh, ra it's not even a radio, an Xbox controller. It doesn't doesn't really transition the skills very much. I get a lot of uh, a lot of emails from people who just uh, they just don't know about FPV. They don't know what this hobby is kind of like, and they say things like, "Hey, Stu, I've got a uh, a phone that can do VR, and I've got an Xbox controller. Can I put those two things together on a drone and answer? And can that actually fly around?" And you're like, "Man, it doesn't work that way. You can have latency, all this sort of stuff." So you really, if you're going to be using a sim, or you want to have your radio hooked up. Uh, what do we got here? Nick, uh, is, for the FPV, uh, is saying, Nick FPV, thank you very much for the super chat. First things first, I have to give Charlie a bit of a smacko. That's what we call these treats right here. So uh, I'm sure he's just heard the lid of this jar open. Let me let me have a look. Well, yeah, he is definitely, uh, he's just waiting, staring at me. So we'll answer your question and best GoPro 8 mount for Tiny Hawk S. So I'm sure that's a bit of a troll question, Charlie. That is from Nick FBV. Thank you very much. Uh, of course, for those people who want to know, there is no real way that you're going to be flying around <laughs> with the uh, Tiny Hawk um, 
Tiny Hawk 2 or tiny, any Tiny Hawks for that matter, and putting a GoPro on there because these things are just a little 1S ripper. They are absolutely tiny. If we go to screen cam here, these things are absolutely tiny and uh, no real way you're going to be putting a GoPro on there. I did see a video where the maker of Real Steady uh, broke it down. And he ended up putting something on, like, I think it was a little 3S quad, and he ended up putting a 4K camera on the top. But that's a, that was an extremely torn-down GoPro for everyday users, and especially if you want to throw a TPU mount on there, Nick, uh, that's not going to be happening at all. Radio, let's keep moving on. But thank you very much for that Super Chat, the first one of the day. Uh, thank you from me and also from Charlie Pooch. And we have... Um, a few people. Uh, Joseph S. Uh, I wanted to strap a DSLR to my Mobula 7. Yeah, me too. Wouldn't that be nice if you could actually fly around and get some of that footage on there? And Brian Fox. I would need a PDB for the Hobbywing X Rotor Micro 30. I don't know if this is a... Oh, would I need a PDB for the Hobbywing X Rotor Micro 3030 stack? 60 amp 4 and 1. I'm just going to Google that whole part there for you, my friend. Uh, Brian, I'm going to say no. You shouldn't need a PDB if it's an all-in-one stack. Uh, let's see. Let's see what we can find. Uh, no, this looks like it is pretty much ready to go. So a PDB is a power, and this is in Australian dollars. Let's change some of this. So people playing at home. Okay, for about 115 bucks. This is still just an F4. It's a 60 amp, so it might be able to take uh, and it's a Beo Heli 32, but you can see uh, these two pads here. This is where your uh, battery wires would go. So you got your positive lead, your ground lead. Here's where your motor tabs, three for each motor. These would be a uh, that's motor two. Here's motor one on these three, and and you can see on the other side you got three and four uh, underneath here. This is it. This this ESC here. This is your PDB. So nowadays it's all built into one. You don't no, no longer need to have something that's gonna we used to have, people don't know, PDBs back in the day, power distribution boards, where you'd have your battery going in, and then from there you'd have a little 12-volt regulator would come out, and maybe a 5-volt regulator, power your flight controller, and a separate one to power your receiver. Nowadays, this is it. This is all you kind of need. So uh, this stuff here, it's a lot, a lot simpler uh, than what... You guys don't understand how good that you've got it. All right. Is beta, fry, is beta flight free? Yep. Absolutely. So you can get the configurator and you can also, uh, it's the firmware that runs on, it's an open, open source firmware that runs on most of our flight controls. And it's really good as well. It does an amazing job. Too easy. Now, I want to know first, do you want to see, we're going to be flying around with some sims. Do you want to see a sim where I can fly around and use my current radio? Or do you want to see a quick demonstration of a another sim that is not really out yet, but it's not going to be an accurate representation of it flying around because it doesn't handle very well in its current state. It feels a bit weird uh, using the Xbox controller. So that's what I need to know. What do you guys actually want to see? And Plummet FPV is, says, still I still use a PDB and I prefer single ESCs. You absolute caveman. What are you doing with that old technology? But look, some people, I think you might get a cleaner, uh, cleaner power um, set up by doing that. And with single ESCs, you're not going to be burning them out. If you actually do get unlucky, you're not going to burn a four and one out. So look, it does have an advantages. I just feel like in terms of building, if I was going to build nowadays, I wouldn't bother to, to go that extra trip. But there's absolutely nothing wrong with doing it that way. William Croth is saying, uh, where is the Tango 2 uh, in stock? Where can I order one online? So first things first, I've got to say thank you very much for that super chat coming in, my friend. Uh, Charlie's ears are going to prick. He definitely has learnt that this sound of this jar opening is for him. <laughs> so here you go. Here you go, Pooch. Hey. So that's from Will. But uh, unfortunately, I even have an email in my inbox. There is not a single, as far as I know, and this is what the email said, there's not a single, what do you call a provider or a single retailer on the face of the planet uh, that has the Tango 2 in stock. There was going to be some coming, I believe, in about two weeks' time. But your best bet would to be to go to, what does it even say on the TBS website? Let's have a look here. And 
Tango 2. Oh, was that... Oh, good. Here we go. This... I wonder if you can buy a pre-order. I honestly... Hang on, this says add to cart. What? Maybe they... Maybe it did come into stock. Add to cart. Radio controller. Um... Okay. Maybe? Oh, delivery time. My bad. It says pre-order here. Your best bet, if you really did want one, would be to possibly... Here's what I would do. I would... There's no point going to put a pre-order in right this second. It's not going to save you anything. I would wait a day. But during that 24-hour period, uh, well, what I would do... I would write TBS an email and say, Hey, look, I really want to get your TBS radio... Can you please tell me how long is the expected pre-order, um, you know, and be polite, and just just so you can have that information to make an informed decision. And then when they write back, you know, who knows what they'll say, but your best bet is probably going to be to put a pre-order in rather than wait for your local, like, if you're waiting for a close-by retail, maybe you're waiting for your favorite FPV store to get this in stock. That's not going to happen. Uh, if I was a vendor, if I had made my own radio and I could make my sales directly from UAV Futures headquarters, I would be doing that rather than sending it to somebody else who then sells it on. You've got to pay those distribution fees and that retailer, you have they have to take their cut out of it. It'd be much better just to sell it from their HQ. So I would say TBS, if I was them anyway, uh, would sell direct first uh, and fulfill these orders before they start shipping out all the others. But I'd... I, I don't know, I can't really say for them, but I would say if you're going to buy it too, just, just get it from here, add it to cart, but write them an email and just ask them about what those lead times are. But I don't think there's any in stock on the face of the planet anyway. All right. Uh, uh, what do we got here? I was just trying to read this question about something about the new Orca Sim. So we're not flying the new Orca Sim today. It's going to be a little bit different, but we might... Uh, I was thinking about checking that, but we're going to do some other ones. And we have a super chat from Donny E, or Donny, and he's saying, Hello everyone, hope you're all doing good, and giving my man Stu a thumbs up. So, yep, yeah, we've got 100 people in here, and exactly 50% of those have given us a thumbs up. So uh, thank you very much, brother, from me and Charlie. Thank you very much for that super chat. Here you go, Pooch. That's from Donny. He just wants to fatten you up there. Charlie's chilling in the background. But if you haven't hit that thumbs up, give me a thumbs up for Donny uh, for supporting that channel. So either you enjoy in this stream or you just want to say, hey, thanks, Donny, uh, for that giving that super chat to Stu supporting the channel. We'll give you a thumbs up anyway. So let's see. Oh, it's, it is actually climbing. If you're sitting at home on the phone and you're like, ah, okay, come on. I promise if you hook, push that like button, it's not going to hurt too much. Maybe just a small bit, but uh, that electric, electric shock you get will soon dissipate. All right, so yes, uh, Epilogue, we are going to have a look at some sims, but I need to know, what ones do you want to see? Do you want to see the demo sim um, that we can only fly with an Xbox radio, or would you prefer to see some other sims of me actually flying around? Not not, not saying my flying is special, but I can use my Tango 2 radio. I need to know uh, what's happening. And we've got someone asking about did the did the winner claim their prize in the giveaway and no they didn't as far as i'm concerned the one i feel the saddest for is uh one of our viewers for was war gaming i think if we watched the stream it was sometime last week the one he missed was the one when we drew his name out on on stream We're like there we go war gaming wasn't sure if it was i war gaming because i was mispronouncing his, his name incorrectly but uh yeah oh do a poll poll it poll it okay so i need to make a poll what do i go here straw poll or something like that uh ben can you post me a link or oh, maybe i can just make one right now poll maker no straw poll why have i got caps lock on and num lock uh let's see straw poll here we go which sim silly demo sim with xbox silly but i'm going to say fun demo sim with xbox or dcl uh, they're the two we're going to have a look at today and uh create poll please pay 4.95 to no <laughs> all right how how can i do i just share this link let's see um we'll see what happens right here's a poll I'm putting it in here. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, go join that. That's going to let me find out. Uh, and that is people asking what dog is that. Uh, and Dodgy's saying the kind that sleeps a lot. Mate, he's just a uh, he's not an not an 
old lab. He's just a lab chilling out, a bit of a, la- bit of a lazy pooch. But he, if you take him outside, he absolutely, I can see his brain rewiring when it comes to, we're getting so distracted here, we're talking about my dog's brain. But uh, when he goes out to the pond, you can see that he wants to pretty much go hunting uh, and looking for ducks. You can see something in his brain, just like when he's swimming around after the ducks, he absolutely loves swimming through all the reeds and all that sort of stuff, getting really muddy in the pond. That's probably his favorite exercise. Okay. We're going to be checking this poll in about 20 seconds. Uh, I've just put a little link there if you want to go in. Otherwise, we're going to be choosing something but Chocolate Lab. Someone saying, mmm, duck, just having some fun here. If you've got any questions, too, specifically about FPV, that's what I'm here for. I'm here to help, and we're up to 74 likes. So, Epilogy, it's Elwari Gaming, I think. No, it actually, I'm pretty sure his name is just War Gaming because I was getting too confused by it. People saying Tango 2. Jack is saying lift off. No, we're not going to be playing lift off um, because I've got it set up. Sometimes my laptop doesn't like changing resolutions and I will lose this window on my, because I've got to set it up to a different screen here and it becomes a huge pain. Things start to flick. It takes me ages to get it back. So the way it's set up now, it should run nice and smooth. I did have a bit, small bit of a, uh, a test run. And Remathorn937 is saying the Orca sim is not good at all. You know what? I haven't even seen it. Let's... Let's watch it on YouTube with the sound off so we don't get another copyright strike and uh, find out just what it looks like. Is it called Skydive or something like that? Okay. Orca Sim. Skydive Simulator from two days ago. FPV Skydive. All right. I need... Oh, is it, we're going to get a copyright strike for this. I really hope not. Oh, good. The sound is off. And uh, let's go screen cap. And here we go. You can see we were watching this the other day in uh, in Discord. If you haven't seen a show called Howzos and you want to see a hilarious take on, uh, I guess, what early 2000s um, Australian stereotypes were, that were, you can you can go watch Howzos. Not right now, when the stream's finished, and then go check that out. All right, come on, buddy. Let's see what this, this sim was like. This is not the sim I was going to fly. This is the Orca FPV sim. So uh, here we go. Hairy Haggis FPV. This looks okay. I don't know. what what is What do you guys think about Orca making a sim? If it was up to me, and I was paying all this money to get some of the best goggles in the world, I would probably just prefer better performing goggles and let the simulators stick out there. Maybe... Uh, the simulator companies who are already doing things like liftoff staying out there. I want them to focus on their goggles, but maybe if this came packaged with your goggles, I guess, uh, and you could play it on the goggles in the screen, that would actually be pretty cool. I don't know if that is possible though. Imagine that having some goggles that could run this, uh, run this sim that I feel like we've just struck a billion dollar idea. All right, let's check this straw poll and find out just how we went, uh, which straw poll view results. All right. Oh, here we had 22 votes for DCL and Silly Fun Demo Sim with Xbox. Oh, you guys, I wanted to do the other one. Well, it was, but okay, we're going to play DCL. Looks like we're going to be doing DCL. And then uh, if we, you, I asked that two minutes ago. I can't believe 40 of you went in here and 22, 23, 23 of you traders chose DCL. So let's do it. We're going to fire DCL up here. If I can find my Steam, bear with me to get this sorted. And, and it's, of course, it's going to the wrong window, so I can't even see what's happening here. Do I want to play Borderlands 3? No, thank you. Let's go to my library, and let's see if I open DCL up. Hopefully, I'll be able to skip. And I'm going to click this button, which should start the game. But we'll hopefully not change all these windows and change the screen capture, all this sort of stuff that you guys are seeing. So give me two seconds. Uh, if everything goes uh, poorly, we'll be back in a second. And I'm scrolling down to answer some more questions because I feel like I've missed a few as well. Um, is there a stronger FPV channel or are they same, the same strength? Let me click play and then I'm going to answer that. So normally, uh, the lower the frequency, the better uh, penetration it's going to have through... Oh, this is so loud. Skip. You're going to have uh, better penetration through obstacles and through like trees and a bit of concrete and stuff. However, you are really looking at like 
the small it's all within that 5.8 band so the, the difference isn't very noticeable if you go down to like 2.4 and you're using 2.4 for your fpv video channel yes you're going to get much better penetration but most of the time uh, when you're in 5.8 if you can get the lowest channel you can that's going to be the one that technically does have the better signal however um Oh, good, my Tango 2 is plugged in. However, it's not going to be that noticeable when you're on the 5.8 band anyway there. But thank you very much, Bradley, for your answer and also for tagging me with. And people are saying, should I buy a secondhand Fat Shark HD3s with the Furious D, Furious True D, or the Sky Zone O2Cs? Let me just start this as well and find out how we can press some buttons connecting to online services. Hopefully, we've got all the sound off. And if I can put this in joystick mode... We'll get this working as well and let's see if i go to screen cap we should be able to we've got our straw poll just here let me know if this is coming through for you guys we should be able to fly around a little bit and the reason i got it in window mode too is because it's going to make it so much easier uh pretty much for my laptop to handle this All right. Um, I would probably get Fat Shark HD threes. You know what? I would probably oh with a with a they're about much for muchness. They're probably on the same same wave level. I would probably get a, a the Sky Zones, James. If that was up to me, I'd probably choose some new Sky Zones over some secondhand Fat Shark. Let's see if we can play this. Let's just fly now and see if this is actually going to work. All right. And I can see some other people are popping up playing the game as well. Have we got throttle here? Let's just go for it. Let's see what happens. Throttle down. Oh, okay, we are good. All right. So flying around, I have turned. We're going to change some different tracks. You guys can... Uh, why is this... Where does this track go? Uh, all right. And if you don't know, the one we're actually playing is the DCL, so we're just going to do a bit of a loop here. And I think the reason I like DCL is because it is... This is hard to talk answer questions and do this the re did i even get in that gate the reason i like this sim is because i don't feel like it is the most realistic out there i do feel like uh you can tune the other ones a little bit better in terms of their physics however fly i want to change a different track this one's a bit boring how do i go back to uh back to my menu however the one uh, thing i like about this is it feels the most fun so if you can sit down and you, you might play this for twice as long as the others. Why? Because it's more fun and you're going to just be enjoying it a little bit more. So you're probably going to get better skills and better practice in the long run. Um, let's keep answering some of your questions because I definitely will get distracted while I'm doing this. And Musa is saying, what is the best simulator buy since there are so many? Uh, well, maybe I, I actually do really like DCL for that reason, for it is the most fun. Can I just actually go to a track, please? Weekly solo trial. Maybe we should check this guy out as well. Um, and people, if you're using Mac, uh, yep, you can have Velocidrone. Oh, great. We've got to go in here and get some other stuff. That's not going to work. Can't I just fly? What do we have here? Events, free flight. There we go. That's what I want. Map collection, easy tracks. No, me intermediate, hard tracks. I don't think we're quite up there with the hard tracks yet. Let's have a look at the intermediate tracks. Collect more props to... What? I can't even choose these. Oh, come on. All right, where we got? Here we go. This this looks fun. This one here. Let's let's fly this. And it says I've got $12,000 up there. Wouldn't that be nice? All right. Uh, have you played some other simulators? Uh, he made... Curry Kitten Simulator he made for free. And no, I have not. Charlie! Hey! You guys hear that? I have no idea what my dog is carrying on about. Bear with me. I'm going to go investigate that. It's very rare that he barked. Give me two seconds. Throw your questions down. That made me jump. I have no idea. It's just someone burgling the house. Don't worry. It's all it's all good. All right. Um, 
We're going to answer Joseph's question. One, I'm flying around. I've just started flying a drone and I'm coming over from a photography drone. You could maybe tell me a great freestyle video, freestyle, I don't know what this next word is, videography kind of drone for not too much, anything with a GoPro mount. So what you want to do is have a look at something like the Nazgul. If you go to uavfutures.com, there's going to be a Nazgul here. I'm just going to be doing a little bit of sim flying while I'm talking. And the Nazgul is a great, not only beginner drone because of its price, but it handles really nicely. It's, uh, where are we going on this? We do a bit of a building dive, I see. Oh, we've got to go through the top. Um, it handles nicely, it's cheap, it works well out of the box, and it has a ton, absolute ton, of power as well. You reckon we're going to get under this building right here? Look at, look at me, Mum. I'm a uh, YouTube, uh, Twitch streaming video games. So, and I, one thing I do think about this sim as well, it has some of the nicest tracks, or the prettiest tracks, to fly around. They seem a lot more uh, just filled with filled with life and different interesting obstacles to fly around it's not like you've made it um at ah i thought we were doing well it's like you've just made it and copied and pasted a couple of objects next to each other all right let me go here and i have to answer a question this one's from raven he's saying good boy charlie so i promise i'll give charlie a little smacko um a little dog treat there when he gets back i just put him outside for a little bit because he seemed to be i don't know a little bit stressed or something freaked him out so uh, i let him outside there so we could go investigate whatever whatever was bugging him i'm sure it was just a just a burglar all right and now i'm going to do a little oh can i land on this train uh, i bet you this is going to get away from me come on and uh, that didn't didn't go so well all right uh, I'm going to push pause just for a little while because I feel like it's totally distracted me from my sim. I've got 120 people watching me fly around poorly and uh, just doing some doing some exploring. And this is why sims are so good because if you are a beginner pilot and you need to learn, you might be trying to practice how to fly around, you, this, is the, this is where it's at. This is going to save you so much money. You know, Not only do you get to fly around somewhere that is really cool, you've got some... That's what I like this one too because it does have fun little tracks to follow, but... You can you can learn these these skills that you are practicing right now are going to transition over to the real world. It doesn't mean that it's going to feel exactly the same. They I feel like all sims always feel a little bit floaty or they don't carry the inertia correctly. And I don't know what it is. I've yet to find a good sim. And I know you can change the settings on liftoff and um, all all of uh, Velocidrone. I know you really can muck around with all those. However, this is a, this is a nice little building dive I'm doing right here. However. I feel like it doesn't matter because the skills that you learn are going to be enough anyway for any pilot to get out there and transition into everyday flying. All right, so let's jump in. I'm going to keep answering some of your questions. I'm just going to park this just here. If we ever want to jump over and have a look, then it's all ready to set up and rock and roll. And Benjamin Lackio is saying, what are your thoughts on the Cadex Tarsier versus the Runcam Hybrid? So let's, uh, why, is this, why is this changing? It's disappearing. It's going. All right. I'm going to close this down, actually, and we'll come back in a little bit because otherwise we're just going to hear that noise coming through. Got our straw poll there. Let's get back on with the stream. And uh, Cadex Tarsier, I don't really like the Tarsier. Why? Because it, it's just, it just seems to be a pain in the butt when it comes to formatting SD cards and the SD cards that it likes. So I thought the specs would be really good, but getting the thing to actually work seems to be a massive pain in the butt. The menu is not intuitive when you have to hook it up to the Wi-Fi, all that sort of stuff. I would say I would take the Runcam Hybrid over that. Um, We've got YT FPV. He's saying doesn't matter if it's brand new or used. Uh, much better. He's saying you should get the what the secondhand Fat Sharks over the O2 Xs. So there we go. However, I should mention that I have I got Fat Shark HO twos, like the top of the right line one. I still use my O twos, my Skyzone O twos. Why? Because I just feel like they are a, a goggle, like a goggle that I prefer more, and they fit my face better, all that sort of stuff. So. I don't know, there's uh, the flip side of that argument. Aaron, Aaron Shah, I think that's how you pronounce it, is saying, um, I'm rocking the joinkiest setup ever. No drone, Xbox 360 controller, free flight sim. It's a start, though. So, that, yeah, that's what it is. That you, I find the skills you learn on the Xbox controller don't really convert well because of the throttle. On the left-hand side, our throttle doesn't have a spring that pushes it to the middle all the time. We fly with no spring on there. The throttle is always, so the, the left stick is always 
totally down for zero throttle, not, not stuck in the middle. And Joseph S is saying, yeah, out of the box, I can see a few of my friends jumping on Steam now, uh, jumping on Steam, saying, playing DCL, playing DCL. Um, is saying, what was I just reading? I was reading something, and then I got totally distracted by you, all my friends jumping on, jumping on Steam. Absolute professionalism here. Uh, anyway, Plummet FPV, if you have access to a sim, use it. When I first started flying, I went through $600 in parts in two months. I couldn't agree more. Sims, I think, are the best tool, beginner pilots, and even into, even even regardless of your pilot's piloting skills, if you want to get better, use sim. Even pro racers, like I know Granger, still practices on the sim regularly. It's a great way not only to keep your muscle memory up and like a little bit of stick time, it is you are going to get better. The more time you spend on it, the more you're going to learn. It is just the best tool. Use the sim, use the sim, use the sim. All right. Uh, YT FPV saying play a DRL that actually I don't have the DRL sim believe it or not that's one that I don't have um, and Joseph is saying I'm on your website and you said the an iFlight and Nazgul 5 yes I did scroll down it'll be in there somewhere and let's uh, if that's if you're mode 2 that's from Roscoe Sticks I'm not too sure who he's talking to right there. And David Shaw wants to know, I have a Tyro 109. How would I mount a GoPro Hero 5? So unfortunately, this is what I don't like about the Tyro 109. So if we jump over and we have a look together, let's see how well this search actually works. So this drone here, this is the other oh, Satara 99. I think the Tyro 109 is almost identical though from memory. It's just like they put the uh, VTX on the inside. Does it look like this? Let me know if that's uh, the same sort of frame. If you have the Tyro 109, if it looks like that. But if it is the same kind of frame, uh, you really just have to put the GoPro. Let's see if we can get a side shot here. This this will do. The way I would do it, you're going to have to mount the GoPro and just pretty much zip tie it down to this bit. If it's a Hero 5, maybe you can get a 3D mount or something and put it in there. So this frame is kind of dumb for mounting GoPros too. I don't really like this frame at all. I think it's stupid. There we go. That's the the short and uh, the blunt the blunt answer anyway. Um, Logic FPV, did you just play DCL? I just joined, so I didn't hear. Yes, I just was on DCL, flying around, having some fun. I was going to leave it running, but then when I changed Windows, it just started accelerating into the atmosphere. So I thought, yeah, we'll just we'll leave that bad boy there. I'll come back to that in a little bit. I do want to show you guys the version of that new sim that I wanted to uh, show you, but people in the straw poll were like, all right, so we might check that out a little bit later in the stream. But i got to say, I really did like it. It was fun. However, it just doesn't feel right. Using an Xbox controller and some of the physics, it's not really there. But what I do like, it's, it's like I keep saying, fun is important on the simulator. You don't want to go, what is the point of doing FPV if it's not fun, right? It's the same thing when you go out to the field. You want to fly around and have fun. If you're not enjoying it, it's, well, this, what, what's the point? So the same thing with these sims. If they've got to be fun for me first and foremost, so then I'm going to play them more, and then I think in the long run I'm going to learn more. James Sadler. Uh, do both of the screens from the HD3s and the Sky Zones look the same, or does one look better than the other regardless of the resolution? So I can't actually remember what the HD3 screens look like, um, but I do, I'm do. i sure people can put their, their things. If you have both those goggles, uh, let me know which one you prefer. Um, I don't know, it seems like you may be from those questionings. I, I'm just going to say I would be taking this Sky O2Cs. But that's that's me, you know, and I've tried every single goggle out there. I have all the goggles and I still fly around with the O2Xs, which have the same screens as the O2Cs. Um, Adam 10, any chance you could take a look at the Ishin Novice 3 kit? This must be, why is this so popular? Did someone just release a video or something on this? Because this is the second time someone on the stream has wanted to have a look at it. And I'm going to say, yeah, it's not it's not too bad if you get these ones that come with the radio this one here so you can see it has and some looks like some 800 d 800s ev 800s i should say rebranded and an i range x radio rebranded as eshane it's it's okay if you get this one with a decent radio from experience i haven't tried this exact kit and maybe they've changed something from when i've tried this radio or from when i've tried these goggles but for a beginner kit point of view it's not it's not the worst. And the drone itself, if it's like the Novice 2, 
which um, is this little one here. The drone itself I did quite like a lot. So I just didn't like these goggles or radio, but it looks like they've changed that. So if you can get that in the better kit, I'd say, yep, go for it. Um, and crazy Russian pilot, is there a filter to add analog breakup for FPV sims? It already happens. So you can notice it comes in the... Um, I think it is in there. The more you get out in range, yes, it starts to come in. I'm not sure if it comes in in terms of going through obstacles and buildings and all that sort of stuff because I guess then you'd need to know where your little pilot is sitting in terms of reception. And I, I don't know if that actually comes dynamically, if that's the right word, through the game, depending on where you're flying around. All right. Uh, the VTX is zip tied above the top plate. That's not going to break. Or anything yeah i agree when it comes to the tyro those tyro drones i think the zip tie on the top with a vtx is just a really really dumb idea why do companies do that they make a good cheap drone they could have just designed a different frame that would have been even cheaper than that one because that one's got some cc c c and seed aluminium in there that's obviously going to jack the price up a little bit just two bits of flat carbon would have been perfect for the tyro 99 it would have been right Ishin, if you want to do a $99 quad, I will just draw up. I could draw up something with chalk and a crayon and say this is going to be a better design than what you are using. All right. Um, and we have uh, SST FPV. DJI, goggle, DJI makes goggle upgrading so different. So do you already have the DJI goggles and you want to upgrade? Or are you saying you've got analog goggles and you want to upgrade? Because if you've got analog and you're going to be upgrading... Um, and you've already got decent goggles, so you might already have some sky zones. You might already have some uh, omways, and you think, oh, gee, should I upgrade and just get a better analog analog one? I find it a really tough sell uh, to be jumping over to the D, jumping over to something like the Orcas or the HD twos. It's a very, very tough place to be, and I wouldn't want to be sitting on the um, what would you say the the sales rep uh, weekly meeting of some of those high end analog goggles, especially when the DJI Digital is so accessible, so cheap, and offers performance which is far beyond what you can really expect with analog. All right, um, Moonrunner, you asked before my fastest time on your test track in FPV Air Two is seventeen point eight seconds. What's yours? You know what? I haven't actually. Uh, I haven't played FPV Air 2 for quite a while, so I don't I have no idea what my fastest time is there on the UAV Futures test track. What I really like that, for some of you who might not know our new viewers, uh, we used to have a place we'd fly around called the UAV Futures test track, and I love that track. Let's see. I'll show you. Look at this. This is, uh, I think, one of the, It's totally different now. You can't fly there anymore because it planted so many trees. But America, UAV Futures, I think... This is when one of the best flight experiences I've ever had is, is this a flight review? Come on. Uh, I'm just trying to jump to the correct one. And here we go. I think this is it. And we've got a Hungry Jacks ad right here. Come on, YouTube. Skip, skip, skip. And then I'll jump over to screen cap. All right, all right. Come on, here we go, here we go. So this is the UAV Futures test track. I can't, I don't know who's flying it around just yet. Don't know if this is Trevor flying or if this is me flying. It doesn't have this GoPro, and on top of that, this... All right, so this was the UAV Futures test track that I absolutely loved. It is one of the... Is this on times two speed? I might just see if I can... Oh, it's on normal speed. Okay, never mind. I must have been a faster pilot back then and put a few packs through. So this is, when is this? 2017. And uh, this is flying around the UAV Futures test track with the America. And it is one of the best drones still to this date that uh, I think I've ever flown and has a special place in my heart as well. And I really like this track because it had an over and under. Uh, so I had that little split S maneuver in here. It felt cool. We'd call this bit going through the corridor and uh, underneath these trees right here. Everything just seemed to kind of line up. But at that corridor part nowadays is where they have um, some, what do you call it? Uh, they've planted a whole bunch of different trees along here. So when you get to about here, this tree on the left is really big. And all through here, they've, that is just covered in trees now. So there's like 100 saplings through there. So no longer can we fly just here. But at its time, this is the place probably where I learned to fly the most flying around and having fun. I got a lot of emails too and a lot of people saying, hey, you've sped this up, blah, blah, blah. So luckily I had to show the, uh, I think it was a week later, I had to publish a video saying, look, this is, um, here's the DVR of these flights. You can see me 
flying around, all that sort of stuff. Anyway, I totally uh, forgot to be answering your questions. John is saying, just bought a sim after wasting $160 on replacement parts for my drone. Yes, that is something that sims will save you money in the long run. And there's even really cheap ones as well. So like FPV Air 2, uh, FPV Freerider. I think they might even be like $5. One of the best things that you can get to learn and also save you money. Also, too, if you're new to the stream, we've got 133 people watching. 86 people have hit the thumbs up button. One person's hit the down, thumbs down button. So let me know how you're feeling about it. Maybe you're like, man, Stuart, this is the worst YouTube content I've ever seen. Smash that thumbs down button. Let me know. Or maybe you're enjoying it. Kicking back on a, it is a Monday here. It might be Sunday where you guys are. I'm also about to run a giveaway as well. So if you haven't entered that, there should be a little form um in the what do you call it in the description you can go in there and jump in and you might win that something today all right uh chrismal 9000 hello first time fpv video fpv uh, your videos on the tiny hawk are awesome thank you my first fpv ready to fly tiny hawk here will be here tomorrow super stoked so uh i'm gonna say congratulations welcome to the hobby if you don't have a sim Maybe you should do that. So maybe uh, Chris Mel 9000, yeah, jump in, have a look at those sim. Even FPV, you probably don't have a radio actually though, so it's not going to help if you're getting first in. So I don't know. That's uh, maybe you just have to wait. But the Tiny Hawks are also a good one to learn on because they are very, very robust. So that shouldn't be breaking anytime soon. And William Barlow wants to know using EV 800s now, and I love the big screen. I have a very old set of Fat Sharks, and I can't use them because the screen is so small. Are the newer ones like that, or are the screens bigger? No, you might have like I'm going to say the older Fat Sharks. They you're still going to have a smaller experience than you're used to with those big screen goggles. So if you really like that, it is something that a lot of pilots uh, have, they struggle with going from big box goggles down to these smaller uh, binocular style fat shark style goggles because they lose a lot of that, they lose a lot of that um, immersion, I would say, and the field of view. And no, regardless, even if you went down to the biggest ones, which are the HDO2s, I think, or the HDOs, you would still uh, struggle to cope with that. But there is also a reason why every single pilot that you look at flies around. Well, I say anywhere you see who are making a lot of serious YouTube videos, or if you go to the races or you look at the serious freestyle pilots, why are they using those Fat Shark style goggles with the smaller screens because it is a better experience. You will get used to it. You will get used to the smaller screens. It's going to take a little bit. It's like anything that you're used to. Let's say you change your, what can be a good analogy here? Maybe you're going to be going to sleep and you, you, you have an okay sleep. You change your bed mattress to a better one. You go out and you buy a super fancy mattress that is meant to offer you the best night's sleep because it might be a different firmness or a different sponginess for a little while you're going to get you may like oh this doesn't feel right this isn't good but after a while you will become used to it and then once you're familiar with it you will have a better experience same thing with the goggles besides that bad analogy if you can uh jump over and fly around with some of those fat shark style ones i feel like it is just at all around a nicer fpv experience all right, not sure. Keep saying smash that like button. We're almost at 100. We've got 137 people watching here. HD2s are 50 degrees field of view. Uh, it's what I fly with. I love the immersion they give. HD, okay, there we go. So HDO2s are 45 degrees field of view, and my eyesight can't deal with single screen box goggles. That's something as well that I don't like about box goggles. Every single one, bar a absolute minority so about five percent that we've probably tried uh gives me terrible eye strain so even when you stretch them out the most i don't know how people are meant to do it maybe some young whippersnappers with like really elastic eyes that i don't know just for me trying to focus i don't wear glasses at all i feel like my vision is totally fine but when i'm flying around box goggles, sometimes i get a bit of a headache and it hurts except for these amazing nun goggles so if we go to uavfutures.com these goggles right here uh uh, absolutely, they were meant to be a joke, turned out to be incredible. Even Trevor really loved those goggles as well. So that was uh, a pleasant surprise. And the reason that happens is because the screen, even though it's up here, it bounces off two lenses. So your actual focal distance, if I can, let's see, it goes out, hits the mirror, goes up, hits another mirror, and then goes out and hits the screen. So you're adding in an extra, I guess, distance that your eyes have to focus on. So that helps rather than it feeling like you're staring really close trying to read imagine trying to read a book that was right really close to your face all right uh anyway let's i'm getting uh 
way, way too distracted. Younger Buckets, giveaway yet? No, we're going to be drawing that in about 30 minutes' time. And uh, there we go, over 100. Ah, oh, that's uh, from Not Sure. Thank you very much for everybody who hit that thumbs up button. And let's see what other people say. And you've got some questions too. Remember me to tag me with at UAV Futures. Let me know what you're flying. What do you want to fly? What's the next product you're looking at getting? Because that's what we're here for. Just have a bit of a chat, talk all things FPV and have some fun. And Carlos D, thank you for asking a question. I can see him coming in now. I feel like I've been rambling too long. You guys need to ask the questions too. So then I can, uh, rather than that way, you don't have to suffer through me just rambling, talking on some FPV nonsense. If you want me to talk about a specific topic, bring it up. That's what we're here for. And Carlos D is saying, at UAV in futures if you had a choice would you take the fat shark attitude or the dominators uh and which version so let's say the current version um the fat shark attitudes they're the green ones uh and the dominators well that's the hd o2s right or the hds hd oh yeah that stands for the dominators i'm pretty sure the d used to stand for the dominators v i'm getting confused here but uh, I don't even know if they make Fat Shark Dominators anymore. So the Attitude V5s, they were the green one. And you can see we have a write-up uh, just here of the best goggle under $300. Best 300 FPV. And if you watch this video and where someone's telling me where should I invest my money, uh, I don't know. Here we go. Go watch this video, and this will really tell you. This is one of the videos I am the most proud of. Um, Ultimate FPV goggle guide. We went through everything, scored them from the these three goggles, the Fat Sharks, Sky Zones, and the Omways. We went through, and each one had a numerical value based on their price, on their usability, uh, their upgradeability, their customer support, all that sort of stuff. So it really does help. Um, if you're if you are looking at purchasing some goggles and you are around this price point you can see they're the attitude v5s at the moment they're the latest uh iteration go watch this video it is something that you need to do that i feel like will help you make that decision i'm not telling you what goggle to buy but this video will give you the facts so you can decide what's most important for you inform your decision and then you're in a better place to uh make that purchase and spend your money all right uh let's see i heard oh we got from plummet fpv thank you very much for that super chat my friend i'll answer your question and we're going to jump in there is a ton of questions so thank you for everybody who's throwing those down there and we can uh get in and talk about some of those have you looked into flight one foul cocks yet uh i'm going to bug you till you do all right we're going to google it and have a look at this and i will give charlie a, a bit of a smacko treat it is just, he's outside at the moment. Why? Because he was barking at something in the background, and I was like, man, I don't know what that is. I'll let him outside. All right, let's have a look. And this is asking me to download something. So this might just be the configurator. I don't really want to download that just yet. But, okay. No, I have not looked at that. Uh, some people have got some videos on here, how to set it up. Let's see if we jump in. We are watching Viper FPV. He's got a pretty cool little intro. So, uh, but of course I am not going to, um, be putting the sound on. Why? Because we got a copyright strike last time I did that on this other video. So, all right, where do we reckon this guy's from? I'm going to say he looks a little bit Aussie chilling in his singlet right here. Okay. So we go through... Looks like he's going to install this firmware, and I'm going to jump to this. Where's this part on the computer? This is the bit I want to see. One of the things I really did like about Flight 1, or Race Flight, whatever it used to be called, is when it came to setting it up, it was so easy. It is far more intuitive than a beta flight. It was like, click this button. Is your motor spinning? Yes or no? No, it's not. Oh, click this button. Is it spinning the right way? Yeah, it is. Can you lift your drone up towards the front? Okay, yes. Can you lift your drone up towards the towards the left or something like that. Okay, done. Oh, it's all set up. Would you like to uh, have an arm switch? Press, press it. You press the button on your remote and it adds it in. I don't know. Is that what plummet? Is that what this is like um, at the moment? Is it still like that with the Flight 1 firmware or is it a bit more complicated? Please let me know there in the comments. Right, I'm going to answer some more. Um, Joseph S, does the DJI remote support sims? Just curious. I'm pretty confident in my current radio. Actually... That's something that I need to test out. I 
don't know. I'm going to say, you, I, I don't know, if you've got a DJ rate, yeah, I'm pretty sure it does, but don't hold me to that. That's my guess. And if it doesn't, I would be a little bit disappointed. Um, will Crossfire Mini or Light ever be in stock? That's from SST FPV. Yeah, eventually, probably when this corona uh, tumbles down a little bit. If you want to ask me a question too, keep throwing them down with at UAV Futures. So that uh, makes it easier for me to see them pop up in the chat. And FPV Nick is saying, I use those Hawkeye goggles for my tiny Hawk S, and it's amazing. My kids love it as well. So I'm glad you're using that one, Nick, because it really is. That's why we made such a big deal about it. It is amazing. And people, when they buy the EV800Ds, I'm like, what are you doing? Please, whatever video you watched, those pilots, did they compare them? They, they're they probably not the sort of pilots who are going to be flying around with them all the time. It's uh, it's easy to review a goggle and say, yeah, you know, this is fine. But unless you're using it all the time, you're going to be starting to getting some eye strain. They're the stuff that viewers need to know. And I feel like if you can't wear the goggles for a long period of time, what is the even, what is the point? Those Hawkeye Nun goggles are incredible for the price as well. Um, let's say license to drive. I wish goggle manufacturers would use free form prism lenses they enlarge the image by bouncing the picture like those tiny hawk uh like those hawkeye little pilot goggles but are physically much smaller so i have no idea about the technology i don't know anything about how that and understand how a, uh, a periscope works but that's about it as far as uh, cramming it into a little fpv goggle i don't know um uh Groom Lake Fisherman just tuned in and you were talking about something about penetration and now you've penetrated my wallet and I just purchased DCL online. So no worries, brother. I will see you on there. We're going to fly around in a little bit as well. I'm going to show you guys the other sim. That's what I wanted to do. And uh, I was having fun, but it also, I'm not too good at answering questions. So I need your help to keep, you know, keep reminding me, don't get distracted, Stuart. I still am live streaming. Keep answering some of these questions. Uh, we've got Nightbot. He's just saying, if you want to sign up to Patreon, go do that now. So congratulations uh, to all those fun, wonderful uh, Patreon supporters that I've got because I couldn't do this channel without you. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. Uh, I better give them a bit of a shout out because I don't, we don't talk about it too much in this stream, in these streams. But thank you. If you are a Patreon supporter, it does make a difference far more than you know, especially at this time as well when we can't even get outside to do our job, to go flying. It's a little bit scary. And without you guys, um, I actually... I don't, I don't think we, we would be here. Right now, uh, let's have a look. We have uh, people saying they just lightly pressed the buttons. Maybe you could lightly press the like button. And at UA Futures, uh, David, David Shaw is saying, at UA Futures are all protocols except SBUS non-inverted. Um, I, I don't know, actually, on that one. So all I really know is iFlight and SBUS. That's all I've really used, and a bit of Crossfire as well. So I don't know if what the other what the other ones um, are like. James Sadler, the only problem is that my quad has an XT30 connector, so I so I don't have a charger to charge XT60 batteries. Can you, James, make a little adapter up? Um, and what quad are you actually using? So this is something that I recommend everybody do. If you have a charger at home, you can just build yourself, or you can even buy them pre-made, just little adapters, XT60 to XT30, JST. Um, whatever it's going to be, so it's easy to use on your charger because that was something that sort of influenced the batteries I was first going to buy, and then I realized, man, I can solder. Why don't I just change these plugs out to the ones I actually need? All right, yeah. we're going to jump in. I'm going to show you this sim that I want to use that is not currently uh, – I don't think it's available to the public. I don't know too much about it. I've only played around with it a little bit. It was kind of fun, though, and hopefully I'm going to turn the sound off so we don't get any uh, copyright strikes. Um, do you have any info on the Jumper T18? No, I do not. I did hear, though, people have been talking about that on the Discord. I probably should have a look at my email uh, and answer some of the questions from those guys. And uh, people saying, Lazy FPV, I just ordered the SkyZone 02Xs, and I was wondering what current antennas you would recommend. Right. We're going to answer your question, Lazy FPV, and then we're going to have a look at this sim. Antennas you need are these ones. If you just look in, type in Pagoda straight into bangers. I'll let this load up and Pagoda 5 antenna. Because if you just type Pagoda, you can get a casual stripe neck dress, whatever that is. All right, so these two, it's, it's, I would, the triple feed patch 
outstanding. We did range testers. This is an open source design. The triple feed patch can go left hand or right hand. Uh, it's just get this one. Um, and also then if you want to get something like this, you could get a cheaper pagoda, slap that on the outside, or you could get a circular polarized antenna like this one actually. This iFlight one is not a terrible idea if you have a little adapter. And the reason this one's good is because see how it's so high above your head? That means your brain is not going to be blocking. If the strone is behind you, your big bucket of water here, um, or air, if you're some of my friends and you're flying around, you know, they might, their head, a bit of malaspex, his head is full of a lot of air, I think. Uh, but here, that's going to make it so your brain doesn't interfere with your signal, so you'll be getting some good reception as well. That's not too badly priced as well for the $7. Right, what we're going to do now, we're going to uh, have a look at... Still, some of this one. We've got LC, FPV. Patrons still get a free battery strap. Yes, they do. But at the moment, uh, well, if you sign up for that $5 tier or more, here's the problem with sending out those straps at the moment. The straps, uh, you get them at the $5 tier. But at the moment, it is $13 in postage for me to send those out. So if it's going out international, it's $13, so I need to do a bit of a post about that bit of an update. So uh, they might be on hold for a little bit uh, for those corona people because I don't want to be sending out uh, saying, congratulations, thank you for signing up for Patreon, and they want to support the channel, and we're also running at a net loss of, like, what's that, $8 or something like that per strap that I send out. Once you once you tap factor in the five, it comes right. Raven saying, hit that like or that dislike, and we are going to jump in and have a look at uh and props office saying i like the triple feed patch antenna probably my phone probably my favorite long range antenna so we're going to fire this other sim up i i think it's called road rotors something i don't know if you've if you've seen this but i have to plug in my xbox remote unfortunately back from my old 360 days and i'll make sure i unplug the correct thing here so i'm not unplugging some of my webcams All right, let's uh, let's do this. Get this opened. Find out what happens. Try and get rid of the sound. And then I'm gonna jump over and uh, have a look here. I got. I will try and change some of the sound settings if it's too loud as well. Wap d wap do up. Is that how you pronounce your name? Is asking me what goggles should I get? No budget. That is easy. Get, if you have no budget, you should be jumping in um, and having a look at the HDI, HDI, HD digital systems from DJI. That's what I'd be recommending. All right, let me have a look here. If I go to screen cap and let's see if this works. We are playing Rota. So have you guys seen this sim before? Let me know. Unfortunately, it has some really fun, cool ideas. It seems a little bit arcadey, but... It doesn't work with uh, with my radio at the moment. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. I haven't played around with it too much. I was really just for a little bit being like, okay, let's see how this goes. And then when I couldn't get my radio work with it, I was like, look, I'll come back to this another time. However, uh, this is, I don't know, this is kind of going to be a, a little demo for, to show you guys. Right, and we're also going to answer, Jacob is asking, can you use 3S on a Fat Shark Attitude V5s? I'm going to say... Yes, however, we will Google that right now. So let's have a look. Uh, give me two seconds to, to get this up here, and then we're going to come back and have a look at this rotor game where everything's exploding in the background. I'm pretty sure we can just look at the voltage range of the Fat Shark menu. Uh, attitude V5. All right. And props office saying, I entered the giveaway days ago and it say I already responded. Is this normal? Yes. If you've entered the giveaway once, you don't have to enter it every single time I do a stream. Okay. And we're going to have a look at FPV faster. And I'm sure it'll say, you guys can't see with me. It should say, hmm. all right, we're going to have a look at the menu. Manual. Attitude V5 manual. Oh, great. That, that's a uh, fantastic manual we've got right there. <laughs> okay. Um, hang on. We are, we are going to find this. So we are looking for the Attitude V5s. I'm almost certain they can take a 3S battery. 
Let's see what it says on bangers. Uh, uh, fat shark. And that's, uh, you can use, okay, this is how, yeah, I think License to Drive has the correct info here. He's saying you can use a 3S on the Fat Shark Attitude V5, but the fan that you plug in, this little, this little bit is going to need a, uh, a 2S balance lead. Can you guys hear that person doing some garden work right outside the window? Why don't they give us the voltage? I'm sure that if I look at Banggood, it's going to give us the voltage on their on their site. All right, let's have a look. Let's, let's have a look together, and then we're going to go in and have a look at the uh, at that sim. Is that coming through? Because I feel like that is so noisy. Let's have a look at this manual. Okay, uh, yeah, I for some reason the manual is not working here, but I'm pretty sure, come on, tell me you guys can hear that. That's a joke. This guy sounds like he's doing gardening right outside. Anyway, we're going to move on uh, and have a look at this sim that we were going to be checking out before I got totally distracted. If I go down here, I think it's this one, Rotor. It's saying press start. And people saying audio good. So, all right, here we go. Where's the start button? Let's see how this goes. Now, unfortunately, uh, it doesn't work with my TBS Tango 2. And I think I've turned the music down, if it even has music. Best lap, a minute 40. Let's see if we can start that. And I should say, too, this is very, very early. I think it's made by possibly two people. Very, very early days. So this sim is uh, really has a long way to go. However, it does look pretty cool. And let's see how we go. It's really weird on the control too, so but you can see we've got our oh our throttle, which is uh, at least that's not the correct stick. Our yaw. And okay we've got some low low rates. Alright we're gonna try and fly around. I was just getting used to the controls. And I wonder if you can change, even change the view. That's gonna, oh, great. That, how do I reset this? There must be a reset button. For testing purposes only. Uh, I don't know if I want to click on that. Let's say options. Is there restart? Nope. Back. How do I go back? Press B to go back. I am pressing B. Press A to confirm. Here we go. Yeah, this this will do. We are stuck here, ladies and gentlemen. Resume. All right, we're just going to fly around, see how it goes. Looks a little bit Fortnite-ly. For what's that game? Fort. Fort. Oh my goodness! Get out of this place! What are you doing, mate? Restart. There's got to be a restart button. Oh, it's a reset button. Maybe if I just take it easy. The graphics, I think, look really, really cool. I do like the graphics, actually. Oh, oh, no. What's happening here? This is why, if I had my radio, it would be so much better. Where's a... Oh, if we can change the view, too. All right, here we go. I think the time to beat was like a minute 40, and I've missed that game. Let's see, does it work both ways? Oh my goodness, apparently there's also a version where I think you can chase a car. Something like a rally car. How far do these levels go? Let's just go exploring and see what happens if we go out here. Ah, uh, okay. That's what happens. I'm determined to do one lap. I'm going to jump in and answer some of your questions. What do you think it looks like? Um, I think, don't judge the, uh, the controls too much because we are flying around with an Xbox radio. And this would be the same if I was trying to fly around DCL. But uh, I think it's kind of cool. Like, if, if I had this to play and it was fun. Let's see if we can find. We go here. Let's see if there's another different mode. Okay. Let's get this one. No, no. Skip this. I press that button. Oh, that must be the reset button. Which we have to do all the time. Alright. It does look interesting. Which sim is this? This is a sim called Rhoda which is like an early, it's not even early access. You can't find it on Steam, you can't find it on Epic. Uh, 
I can't even find a way. Okay, let's go. Quit. Do you want to quit? Yes. I think there's a couple of different modes. I think I saw one where you can chase a car down or something. Press start. Select level. Maple drift. Okay, here we go. I think this is where you chase a car or something like that. We've got 150 people wanting this. Alright, let's, let's try this. Go to Rota the game. And I don't know where the car is or what makes the car actually come out. This feels a little bit easier on it. Oh, yeah, I meant to totally go through there backwards. How do I start the car driving? I have seen somewhere the car was like spitting a trail out behind them and you were kind of chasing it and filming it and that looked pretty cool. Can these balloons, can we go into them? Yep, just like real life. Can go look on my Johnny FPV filming these balloons. Oh, I was going to do a roll there, but anyway, let's reset this. Here we go. We're going to do a lap around here, change the view. What's the view? And the physics. W would this help me learn? I think if I had my radio, it would actually be not too bad, but because I've got to use an Xbox remote, I'm going to say it's, it's doing pretty well. I don't know, what do you guys think it looks like? It looks pretty, that's for sure. Would this help me learn? Yep. Oh, I was so close to finishing a lap. Anyway, we're going to wrote, uh, wrote, not wrote, ah, uh, yeah, no, wrote, wrote, I guess maybe that's just my accent just here. We're going to jump over. I'm going to get out of this, actually, because, wait, yep. That was my little FPV simulator. If you want to enter, too, we have a giveaway up the top. Put your name in there, all that sort of stuff. It's your name and email. We're going to be drawing that soon. We have a Tarsair. A uh, little 4K cine can thing. We have a Toro 89, some ESC, some props, and a SIM key. So it's kind of like becoming quite a large prize at the moment. All right, how do I get out of here? Quit. There we go. All right, we're going to jump over. Have a look at our face cam. Keep answering some questions. Yo, where can I find the SIM? I think it is rotorthegame.com. I don't know if it's available yet, though. Um, game in development. Yeah, here you go. I'm going to post a link in the description. Send these guys a uh, little little email. I don't know if you can actually... Uh, let's have a look at their roadmap here. Let's see what they're going to say. So, let's... This is what I... What, this, maybe they've got it set up better so they can fly around. Probably a better... Better, uh, better pilot than me at their own sim. So this looks kind of cool. This is the one little level that they did have. And I want to see if it shows us a picture of them chasing a car. Because the level design looks fantastic. It looks fun. I would want to fly this. Does this not look really, really cool to you guys? Game in development. Let's have a look. Roadmap. Oh, over that train. In progress. Release one. In this version, a tutorial. Drones. Easy. Five single player tracks. A ghost track. Classic and alternative flying systems and score assist. All right. Freestyle tracks, customizable drones. Well, at least they have uh, some stuff on, coming online. Elimination mode. All right. So, I don't know. I, I don't know where I saw them chasing some cars, like a rally car, and you we were kind of following along the road. It did look pretty fun. Anyway, let's get back to answering some of your questions. Um, we have... Mick Mitchell Variates, because I have to leave soon. I don't want to miss the giveaway. Don't worry, we will be drawing it in about five, six minutes time. Uh, Simulator Orca FPV. Yeah, we did watch a video on that before. I haven't tried it out yet, though, so I'll probably do that sometime later this week. And Teresa Thurster, or oh, The Rooster with some double zeros. The Rooster, there we go. Would you go for a Tari kit from Banggood or piece together the kit of your first build? I feel like if you can get the original, not the original, get the updated $99 build, you're going to have a much better time over the Tyro 99. However, uh, for probably about the same price now, if you shop around, you might be able to find the Nazgul iFlight, um, the Fire, Nazgul 5, which is hands down better than the uh, original $99 UAV Futures build. 
people asking about the giveaway. Yeah, and Dodge is saying you only need to enter once. If you've already entered once, you've already gone in the draw to win. So you don't have to uh, worry about entering every single time. It's not a new form or anything like that. It's just the same, same form. If your name's in there, you've gone in the draw. But the catch is you've got to be watching the stream and email me within 30 minutes of us drawing it live on here. So then you know, did you win? Did you not win? Uh, and if you don't, uh, then, well... If you don't claim the prize or don't email me, you forfeit it and it just goes to the next stream. So we've, the prize doesn't disappear. We just keep jackpotting it, putting more and more stuff in there. So then eventually, either people are going to win all the time or we uh, ship out a whole bunch of drone stuff to one person. All right. Let's have a look. And Epilogi, is a Tyra 69 any good? I'm not too sure. I do have one, but I just haven't put it together. Maybe uh, we should build one in another Saturday soldering U of Futures live streams. And we have... Joseph S is saying the Ishin Wizard is kind of old. Yes, I absolutely agree. And Ben has found me. So a big shout out to Ben. He has found me some footage of the car chase footage. So I'm going to play that now for you guys as well. Oh, I've lost. Hang on. I've clicked the wrong window. And now I need to click back here. Because I didn't open that up in a new tab. And uh, I need, I've lost all your questions right here. So let me press pause. And I'll put that up here. This will be better, so now you guys can see. So this is what I was hoping to uh, kind of check out, and I thought it looked pretty cool. Of course, sound off, because no copyright strikes, no more, please. So does this not look fun uh, to you guys? Chase, at least having something to chase and zip around. I was like, that's a great idea. I don't know, why, why haven't we done that before? I think uh, definitely something that, is just and that little trick was pretty nice as well so yeah definitely uh i want to try this out once my radio is working with it once i know more about it and uh maybe we can get a bit more support for it and see if we can get some extra features and stuff so let me know what you guys are thinking as well all right i'm going to go back to answering your questions so and then uh we're going to be drawing drawing some winners all right yeah uh and tailspin rc is saying ev 300 d's did get good reviews go for it I don't know what you're, uh, how much you're going to be purchasing for them. Um, so they're okay. Uh, I don't know. They're not, not my favorite goggles. They weren't terrible though. And let's see here. Make sure you enter in that giveaway. We've got about three minutes left before I'm drawing it as well. Um, and Joseph S. I really like how some sims are starting to have a more cartoonish art style. You know what? I... I actually don't care what it looks like. Does it have to look super realistic? No. What does it have to do? It just has to fly well. It has to be fun. So it's got to feel like the real thing, and I just have to learn. Those stick movements, are they going to uh, transition over to real life? If yes, abs if that's the case, absolutely. And it doesn't matter if I agree. If it looks cartoony, and if it's fun, that's the other thing. Because you're going to be playing it more, it's going to... Why do you think they make those educational apps for people to learn on for kids fun with sounds and music and like you got it and like i don't know i used to be a teacher so you see all those little things oh, do this math problem and uh then the little bird flies over and i don't even know what happens you know those those maths games maths apps on the ipad and stuff the reason they have those is for kids because they're fun if you just gave them the math problem and said here it is uh do this they'd be like man i'm not doing this this is super boring it's kind of the same thing for our brains as an adult when you're flying around you're chasing a car you're working on those skills it's not just like here is a track go and do this finish this just learn on the simulator if it's fun like this uh i think man that's a that's a great game all all sims should be putting this in but hopefully this is something that makes rota unique as well i mean look at that that's a pretty cool little uh an image right there so it was how how apt a little drone chasing the car you're getting points for it i'm i'm all down for that if people are learning more and playing the sim more i think this sim is going to have a bright future so that's something we're going to be checking out a little bit more on the stream as well um if you had to pick one sim to start with, at the moment, lazy FPV, I'd probably say DCL because uh, it looks good, it flies good, and it's fun. So, all right. You have one minute to answer those, uh, to put your email in there, guys. If you haven't already done that, if you've already done that, don't worry, you're in the draw. We're going to go in and have a minute. I'm going to post a link to the giveaway form. It should actually even be in the description of this video. However, uh, let's have a look here. Should be... For me, it's actually underneath the chat. So let me copy this form, copy link address, 
And Michael wants to know, what's my opinion on the free scar? Look, this is a YouTube redirect link, so I don't know if it's going to let me do this or not. No, it's over the characters. So I don't know if a mod would be able to post a link to the giveaway form in the in the comments as well. But it's also in the description. Uh, Free Sky X Lite. Uh, I don't really like... I, look, the radio is okay. But Free Sky has really shot themselves in the foot for what they stand for. They've walked all over their customers, all over the people who, su who supported them and bought their gear. And now they've locked people out of D8. They've done all these stupid upgrade mods and uh, it just they've stopped people from flying crossfire. It's just kind of um, just just dumb. I don't I don't think uh, what they did was a smart move at all. The radio it works, yes, but um, it's not not my favorite thing at all. Okay, uh, and lazy Travis is saying I disagree. Go with DRL over DCL. DRL has a far better tutorial mode. DCL looks beautiful though. I actually haven't played DRL, so maybe that's something I should have a look at as well. People saying they use Velocidrone, it's great, lots of tracks. Beta Flight configuration tab is a nice touch. Um, and Joseph S, I made a joke about a simulator combining both RC cars and real cars and quads for a friend, but honestly, I think this is a really neat concept. I love to see the car drivable, so I, I, I guess so, and it depends. I would prefer them to work on the quad stuff first. And Plummet FPV is saying, I'll never buy another freestyle, free, free Sky product. And I would say, I completely understand where you're coming from. Um, DRL does legit have an amazing tutorial. Uh, Joseph S, yeah, the DRL tutorial is amazing. I'll give him that. All right, so it seems a lot of people are saying the tutorial is really, really good. All right, we're going to draw a giveaway now. So we are at the time is 11.32. So let's go in there. You have about 10 more seconds to enter the giveaway form. Uh, Malice Vex is posted the giveaway form. I can see it there in the comments. It's also in the description. We're going to go through. We're going to pick one person out, and you can win uh, this, this. The, you can win a lot of stuff, right? It's like two drones, some props, some SIM keys, and some ESCs. All right. And if you don't win, well, uh, you will have a chance in the next stream because if the person doesn't email, whoever wins, you've got half an hour. Send me an email saying, yay, I won the stream. The email is in this description as well. It's uavfutures at gmail.com. And then it's the, and my email address is also on my About page on YouTube. If you just click UAV Futures and look at the About bit. Anyway, send me an email uh, and then say, as long as it's within the 30 minutes of drawing it, uh, you win. But let's do this. I don't want to put everybody's email on the screen, so bear with me. Fingers crossed. I also heard that uh, it is good luck if you hit the thumbs up button, uh, but I can't confirm that. Let's have a look here. We're at 121 likes. Let's see how we go. Live stream entries. Uh, and License to Drive is saying, Fat Shark posted some pictures of their new Bite Frost HD system on RC Groups two days ago. Wish I could post a link uh, with their pictures. Yeah, I did see that. wasn't sure if that was real or not. Uh, it looks like something you strap on the outside of your goggles even more, so it makes them even bigger. So now your Fat Sharks actually hang off your face. Whatever, but I'm sure uh, I'll see. have to see some videos on how that goes because Fat Shark does not want to send me any any products whatsoever. Okay, we have... Uh, Devo and Jonas, you two, looks like you're the last two to enter here, so we're going to do that. The numbers are between 511, so from 2 to 511, and I should say too, uh, if you're a mod on any of my servers or uh, on my discords or anything like that, you guys can't win. You guys who are... This is they helped me test this format at the start, but yeah, you guys, if I choose you, I'm going to redraw it because uh, I'm there's no way I'm going to be sending it out to some of my mods, and they've been saying I'm going to quit Stuart if that's the case. But yeah, all jokes aside, if you're a mod or part of the UAV Futures crew, you know guys, you know know who you are. Fortunately, uh, you guys can just suffer in your jocks. You don't get to win. This is for the everyday viewer out there. Okay, let's do it. Random number generator between two. And enough rambling. 511. Bear with me. Random number between. And let's go here. Random number generator. So, and I'll make this its own separate window so you guys can see with me. 
I'm trying not to look at the uh, chat too much because it distracts me. And I want to make sure I get this right. And I also don't want to blast people's emails. So let's do this here first. We're going to have a look at the email. I wanted one number between 2 and, what do we say, 511. Let me just double check. Yes. And where's this window? And make sure you guys can't see everybody else's emails. That would be bad. Okay, we're going to go to screen cap here. Um, people saying, damn it, it just keeps growing. Yeah, it does, but uh, the prize also keeps growing as well. So let's have a look. And we go to screen cap. Okay, I want a number between... I want one unique number between 2 and 511. All right, fingers crossed, boys and girls. Um, Carlos D, someone is saying, someone did suggest to jump the list because people never join and come back. Well, then they're going to miss out. If they we draw their name out, that's just how it works. We could do some single little giveaways every week and say, it's this person, oh, this person won that, but I'm going to prefer for a bit of fun for me as well. Uh, we're just going to keep jackpotting it. So eventually... It is going to go off, and somebody is going to win an absolute metric ton of our drone parts shipped to their house. We had one viewer. We've had a few viewers email us uh, where the first time we ever did it, somebody – you guys are waiting for me to draw this number, I know. The first time somebody won, but they entered too many times, so we still sent them their prize, but threw another SIM key in and made it so you can only enter once. And then we had – I think it was a bloke called Steve who emailed me about 12 hours later and, like said, Stu – uh, I saw that I missed the stream. I saw that I won, but just want to say congratulations anyway. And then another time we had War Gaming, who was uh, drawn out, who has been a regular viewer of these streams, and it seemed to see, like watched four in a row. And then the one time when he was chosen, uh, he wasn't in the chat and didn't send us an email. So unfortunately, uh, we've had a few close calls, but let's keep going. I kind of find the jackpot idea exciting too. So let's do it. I want a number between one unique number between two and 511. Hopefully, can you guys see this in the chat? Is that clear enough? Uh, let me know as well because I'm watching on a small screen on my other monitor and hopefully, um, let, let me know. Is this number clear enough? Let's do it right now. Fingers crossed. Three, two, one, get random. All right, entry number 310. You can see just here. So bear with me. We're going to go and find this entry, and I don't want to put everybody's uh, face on here. So 310. All right. Let's have a look. And if I minimize this a little bit, get this smaller. That's 311. Come on, scroll up just a little bit. Why does YouTube, why do they make this so hard? Just, there we go. Oh. Okay. And now I'm going to minimize this bit. Look at this. I absolutely nailed this one. That's the quickest I've ever got it ready. And I'll get a window to cover that. I'm not looking at the chat because I don't want to get distracted. All right. And where's our other window? Minimize this one. So today's winner is this. At, and the, you know what? I've also started making it look like this. So let's go to screen cap right here. So screen Scott, I have no idea how to pronounce that, Desulu, or something like that. If you could please send me an email uh, in the next, we are at 11.39. So by the time it hits, I'll give you an extra minute as well. 10 past 12, uh, my time. You've got 30 minutes now to send me an email, and that prize is going to be yours. If you win, you're going to have to pay shipping. Uh, if you don't want to pay shipping, feel free to forfeit the prize, because then we can just jackpot it to the next person. Uh, and I should also say too, I've made that so you can't see everybody else's name because I've seen some people saying, I was right under that. Damn it. I was so close. Some people getting a little bit, uh, upset that they were so close that their name was like only two more away or something like that. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, it's a bit of fun. That rotor sim, I definitely want to look at more. I just need to get my controller working with it a little bit. We're going to jump over to here so I can get rid of everybody's emails. I always feel a bit nervous about having... Um, 
blasting everybody's emails all over the screen actually so we'll minimize that one all right that looks like it's all good and we'll find out what happens so we need to definitely check my email in the next you've got 30 minutes from now so uh if that is you go check that out and that um let's answer a few more questions and then i think uh it sounds like it's stopped raining outside i might take the dog out for a bit of a bit of a walk epilogue is saying sigh congrats to scott's though who is Scott and why is he winning instead of me? Uh, yep, there is just one minute winner. So that is from Doom. That's to answer Doom 239. Way to go, Scott. And it seems like people are pretty supportive, actually. Some people seem to be bummed that it wasn't them. Other people are uh, giving some big thumbs up. All right. And Michael's saying he's so laggy. So let's have a look here. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Definitely subscribe for more FPV related content. We'll be back next. Uh, if you're in the US, it's going to be Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. And if you are Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and if you're in Australia, it is Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. So it's Monday. This kind of feels like the end of my weekend at uh, the start of my weekend for me when I finish this part. I'm going to go. I got a little bit of soldering to do. I want to film some other stuff. I want to test this sim out. And then uh, I should be clear for the afternoon, hopefully. Oh, and I do have about 40 emails. Uh, not too many to get through as well. But then that should be it. All right. Let's see. Uh, people are just talking about the jackpots. And Plummet FPV is saying, I don't enter giveaways, so I'm not in. Lol, good luck, guys. You should enter a man. You just a name and an email. And uh, there you go. You could be in the draw to win some of this stuff. So anyway. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Thanks for hanging out. Hope you had fun. Uh, I love doing these streams. It's just a cool way to just check in with you guys, find out what's going on, have some com uh, conversations, and to those friendly faces I keep seeing on here, Epilogy, Joseph, Ramathor, and those people checking in all the time, Nick FPV. There's a whole bunch of you guys. It's cool to see that just we're starting to build a small little community here of people that I'm chatting to. Even though I'm the one doing all the rambling, it's nice to see all your comments and that sort of stuff. And uh, Simon, you can see that you're in there and he wants to know why don't you play ads on here every 30 minutes or so like twitch dud that's probably only three or four ads per stream and would generate some income i don't know uh it's just talking to you guys that's not really the ads aren't really what it's about so i don't know if you do appreciate that uh and people are like yeah I, i'm glad there's no ads on here there is the patreon link up there somewhere all those super chats as well even if it was one or two dollars thank you to those couple of people who threw in a super chat today because it does make a difference so anyway i will uh catch you guys i was almost going to say tomorrow but it will be next week um but i'm going to try and do a video and i do want to go out and try and get flying this weekend if it depends what happens with the lockdown if that's lifted any of that sort of stuff so um We'll just have to see. But I filmed a lot of bench videos or stuff in the studio. It's just getting out and flying has not happened because of this stupid virus, which is making it really tough. So anyway, that's enough for me. Subscribe for more FPV-related content. And as always, uh, happy flying.